Hi everybody and welcome to Woo Woo Wednesday. I decided to name it Woo Woo Wednesday because we might talk about anything that has to do with anything non-traditional but spiritual. Maybe something that doesn't necessarily fall into a category of a specific spiritual practice but enhances your life in some way, makes you feel a sense of well-being or a sense of um, goodness, peace, comfort. So that's what I like to call woo-woo. Anything a little bit out of the ordinary, but enhances your life in a good way. That's my definition, and that's why I wanted to call it that, because I might talk about lots of different things. I might talk about tarot cards. I might talk about uh, shamanism. I might talk about um, talking to dead people or talking to guides or angels. There's a lot of different directions that I can go with this, uh, my Wednesday talk. I'm going to try to keep it fairly short and maybe answer some of your questions. If you have something you want to talk about, be sure to write it in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe if this is your thing. And let's just delve into this journey together. Let's just move on to the next step. Let's just um, create a more wonderful world. And you know how we create a more wonderful world is creating a better world inside of us. And so no matter what's going on on the outside of us, the most important thing is to think about what's going on on the inside. Where am I inside of myself? Is it well with my soul? So that's really the goal of life, if, if you really think about it. Um, I recently have been watching some different um, uh, documentaries about different people that have overcome different huge obstacles in their life. And um, it's really inspiring when somebody is able to overcome challenges and really thank the challenges for giving the, them the opportunity to be one with their soul and to develop a relationship with themselves, with maybe a spiritual practice that they've really connected with. Uh, a lot of times, those are the things that happen that move us forward in life. It are, it's those challenges, those things that, that create um, what is commonly called a dark night of the soul. It's really not a dark night of the soul because I think that, you know, our soul's okay. It's probably more a, a dark night of the ego or a dark night of the identity, which, you know, I kind of think of our ego as our identity. I know um, I can point to at least one time in my life where I went through a very dark night of the soul, what I called it. And it was really that I didn't know who I was anymore, that the identity I had created for myself no longer fit into my circumstances, into my viewpoint on life, into my belief system. And it created in me not really knowing who I was anymore, not really knowing how I fit into the world, uh, thinking that I had a specific life plan and then that plan got completely um, eliminated from my life. And so everybody has to go through those things. Everybody has to have have um, the rug ripped from out from under them so that they can recreate their life and that they can um, kind of shift their identity in a different direction. I think we all go through those kind of things. And uh, it's very inspiring when you hear other people's stories of how they've really overcome the challenges in their life and created a new version of themselves. And so maybe during this time, during this pandemic, this time of social distancing and spending more time at home and doing a lot of self-examination, maybe it's time to really go through that and really think about, is the person who I am the person that I want to be for the rest of my life? Is this person that I am portraying to the world, is that the real me? Is that the person who I am? Is that um, how I want to leave a legacy when I pass on. Like, what are people gonna say about me at my, um, at my funeral, if there is one? What would people say? Would they say, well, of course, when you're at a funeral, everybody says good things, but what would they be thinking, you know, when that person passed? Would they be thinking, oh, my life is so much better because of them? I remember when my parents passed, both of them, the way we did the services was, um, we didn't have a body laid out, you know, for people to come by and boohoo and all that. 
what we did was we had people who came to the service get up and share of how their lives had been impacted by the person that had passed, both my mother and my father, who died about nine years apart, I think it was. But that was very comforting to us to see people get up and say, you know, this person did this for me. They made my life better. They um, they came and rescued me when I was in a bad place or they, you know, this act of kindness changed my life. Um, those are the kind of things I think that we, when we pass and we look back on and say, well, my life must have been okay because I made a difference in the life of somebody. And so during this time of isolation, social distancing, instead of, you know, getting all up in arms about, I'm so mad because somebody bought all the toilet paper, or uh, I'm so upset because I can't go to work and blah, blah, blah. Instead of doing that, let's look at our lives and say, you know, what can I change about myself? What can I change about my circumstances? And really look and see of what's working in your life and what's not working and what things can maybe we work on together as a collective planet of humans. What can we do to change the way we're experiencing life? How can we live our lives more authentically and in, um, in a good place with the planet, in a good place with um, what can we do as individuals to create a collective experience of life in a better way? So that's just what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about really going within yourself and discovering what it is that you can do in the comfort of your own home to change things, to change the way you're experiencing life. And to go back to my first statement, if it is well in your soul, then whatever's on the outside, sure, it's going to affect you. Sure, it's going to cause some distress. But how can we look at life in a different way? How can we be present in our experience and be okay with what is? Uh, really going into that sense of discomfort and saying, what do I really feel discomfort about? What do I really feel angry about? Is it really because there's no toilet paper or is it something else? Is it my fear of scarcity? Is it my fear of not having enough? And that can go to a lot of different things. If there's, you know, obviously a ton of people out of work, there's a ton of people that don't know how they're going to pay their rent or their mortgage or their electric. They don't know how they're going to move forward. And it's a really, it's a really uh, intense moment of, how do I create the next moment? How do I move out of feeling powerless to change things in my life to understanding that I am powerful and there are things that I can do to shift what I'm experiencing in my life so that I am moving forward in some sort of um, sense of empowerment within myself and knowing that everything that we go through is temporary like life is completely impermanent. There's nothing that we can guarantee. We can't guarantee that tomorrow we'll be able to leave our homes and, and experience a normal life. We can't, we can't really predict that if that's going to happen in a month or, you know, I know that some places are, are reopening businesses, they're reopening and, um, who knows? Who knows? If it spikes again, if the deaths start to spike again, then I bet they'll close things down again. Who knows? Um, I shared in uh, one of my previous episodes, if I guess that's what you call it, um, about the tarot cards for the month. And May is the Hermit card. And the Hermit card doesn't say that we're going to be out all enjoying our lives again really soon. Hermit is all about isolation. It's all about going within ourself and um, really examining our own inner sense of wisdom. And so I think that as we uh, say goodbye to April and move into May, that it's really important for us to really say, is it really time for, for me to rejoin society? Is it really time for me to go out and uh, be social again? 
I think that, you know, we may want to take a step back and re-examine that for ourselves individually, obviously, if the economy opens back up and um, life kind of goes back to normal. I think that um, that's not something that we can control one way or another, unless we're a politician, <laughs> then I guess we have some control. But for us individually, I think it's still going to be a real time of uh, deciding for ourselves whether we should still continue to social distance, whether our time of isolation is completely uh, done, whether we have grown at all as a soul from this time. Um, I just think about, you know, different people that are in the news and in, you know, the documentaries have been watching about how they attribute their spiritual growth to that time of isolation, to that time of not knowing who they were, were as a person and not being able to control their outer circumstances to a large degree. And yet it created within them the opportunity to go inside and really learn who they were as a soul. So I want you to really take this time to really think about that and, um, and use this time of isolation to really focus on your soul, focus on the light of your soul and really creating change in your own personal life. And I thank you for listening and I hope that you will um, join me next time for another edition of Woo Woo Wednesday. <laughs>